here I'm practicing magic mat with all three dogs at the same time while I do some kitchen chores. Uh, Buddha is the brown and white dog, Ari is the black and white border collie, Star is the big black dog. I missed out right there on an opportunity to reward Buddha for going to his mat for the first time, so now I'm going to help him out a little bit. He's the dog with the least amount of history practicing this skill, so I spend a little bit of time rewarding him for staying on his mat, rewarding him for sit, rewarding him for down, reinforcing more frequently for Buddha, given that this is probably only the seventh time he's actually played this game. Ari, by contrast, is an expert at this skill, so she went and found her mat on her own, very little direction from me. Throughout this entire practice, I think I told Buddha to go to his mat twice. You'll see sometimes later on where he gets up. Star once or twice, I never needed to tell it to Ari. Other than those little reminders to help him out later on when they get lost, I am not giving my dogs any cues. The mats are out, they go to their mat, they stay on their mat, and I reinforce that. Meanwhile, Star's wondering where's her mat. So now Star has her mat, that's helpful. Still reinforcing Buddha the most, because again, he has the least amount of history with this skill. Ari can wait the amount, largest amount of time between rewards because she has the greatest amount of history practicing this skill. There's one of the times I'm telling Star to get on her mat, helping her out a little bit. Still rewarding Buddha the most frequently. But you can see even though this is only his seventh time or so with this skill, he's already in a nice stay on his mat, able to remain there despite the distraction of me feeding the other dog treats, me going to the counter, and then in a moment me putting away dishes, cleaning the sink. By building up a solid foundation that being on the mat is awesome, which I did with treats, and you can see that in the other game, the other video on Magic Mat on YouTube. By building up that foundation and then adding in distractions and reinforcing my dogs for choosing their bed instead of going to check out the distraction, I've created a really solid mat stay. Three dogs, all of whom would be under my feet trying to lick dirty dishes if they didn't have their mats. Speed it up a little bit. Just watching me put dishes away is not all that exciting. Right there is where Buddha gets a little lost, so I helped him out. I told him to go back to his mat, and then once he's sitting and staying on his mat, I treat it again. Second time he got up because I balled a door into his face, so he should have gotten up, poor guy. And that's the second time I'm telling Buddha to go back to his mat, helping him out because he wandered away. But again, this is only the seventh time or so he's practiced this game. So I've added the distraction of me putting food away, putting dishes away, the distraction of the other two dogs, the distraction of the other two dogs getting treat. And I'm certainly asking for quite a bit of time in between rewards and turning my back. So Buddha is doing really quite well considering all those variables. By reinforcing really frequently in the beginning, by practicing on previous days to build value for the mat itself, I have built up a really solid foundation for my dogs. So they can stay on their mat, I can get away with adding a lot more time in between rewards, adding a lot more distraction at this point. I'm not having to keep my eye on them, I'm not having to, although I will occasionally certainly watch out of the corner of my eye, make sure I'm rewarding them frequently enough that they want to keep staying on their mat. At the end here, I go all the way into the pantry and all three dogs stay on their mat, which is quite impressive because that's actually where all their food is kept. So staying on the mat while I go into the food room, it's pretty impressive stuff. So right there, I'm going into the pantry. Dogs stay on their mat, even though I am now 
near their food. And really important part of this skill is to tell your dog when they are done. If you want them to stay on your their mat, you need to also tell them when they're done. So I tell them all, all done in a moment here. After a few last rewards. All done. Empty hands, all done. You'll see Ari's the only one who takes that seriously. She gets right up, 